few weeks ago the Bush Camp add-on was uh, published on explain.org. I gave it a go and it has to be said that the initial version had a few issues. After a bit of toing and froing with the author he's published a version 2 and that version 2 is essentially a toolkit that enables you to add the add-on um, to any aircraft and it really is very good. This uh, video is my review of the add-on and, and also serves as an excuse to fly a few aircraft to an off airfield location near Quattam River. I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you do, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Installation of the add-on is comparatively straightforward. There's a really good manual to go with it, which takes you through all the steps. Um, essentially what you're doing is making a copy of your chosen aircraft and then copying a few files and making a small change to the configuration of the aircraft using Playmaker, uh, but, which sounds a bit frightening, but actually it's very, very easy. Um, the only thing that isn't in the manual, which I've done, is I've changed the name of the aircraft to include the word camp at the beginning, um, just so that you can find it and explain, because what I have found is that the names get quite long and then they get lost in the uh, user interface. Here we have the Super Cub, um, the tent visible is master arm off and if I set the master arm to on the tent will disappear which is quite cool isn't it. And it's particularly important that you turn the master arm to on before you take off because otherwise the tent will fly alongside you which I'm not going to lie is a bit odd. One of the nice features in version 2 um, is that um, the tent lights up at night. So if we just go into settings and set for dusk. Now, um, can't see the lights because I forgot to turn the master switch on on the aeroplane. So if I turn that on then you can see where the aeroplane is. Um, and then you can see the tent there. Now the maker does suggest that having the lights on in the tent at night might attract bears so I guess in the real world you would do that but it might make for a nice evening shot at Oshkosh or something I guess. Okay let's put it back to daylight because flying from a strip like this in the in the night time seems like a, a suicidal thing to do. Let's stow the tent and go flying. Okay, so taxi onto the strip. begin the takeoff roll as we approach the little kink in the strip and then turn into the air and we're going to take a, a right hand turn after takeoff and fly it over the sound. So we turn back towards Mo Creek. It's quite difficult to spot uh, the uh, the approach in. 
so you can see the just about see the effort on the hill there. And you can see where the where the valley is. Just there. You can see the, uh, the the start of the creek just on the left of the bottom there, and we're now flying below the level of the Mo Creek Strip into the valley. Careful not to get too low. And we need to be sort of between four, four, fifteen, five hundred feet here, I'd say. Bearing in mind that Mo Creek's at six hundred feet. If you go too low, you end up having to zigzag round the uh, the line of the creek rather than flying over the trees, which doesn't make for much of a stabilised approach, to be honest. There's the creek look you can see. So we're basically following the uh, the line of the of the valley, pretty much. And as we turn this corner, you can just see the first sandbar. Now that's not where we're landing. That's a kind of final aiming point. And we're looking to be at about 200 feet as we come out at the end of that and then we're going to follow the line of the creek between the trees which is quite cool and just around the corner there's another sandbar which we're going to land on here we go around the corner there you go is that and there are loads of these spread about um, by the scenery makers all of them pretty difficult um, it took me a while to work out how to do that one okay let's taxi under the tree somewhere and set up camp There we have it. Camping on a sandbar near Mo Creek in the PA18. Okay, so next on the list is the Cessna 150. Uh, uh, and I'm doing this one to try out the tricycle wheel um, setup rather than the tail wheel setup. Which seems to work perfectly well and the blue tent, obviously. This is the V Skylabs um, Cessna 150 from uh, for x 11 so I've not gone around to upgrading yet I'm going to turn to the runway and get rolling and what is noticeable is as we start the takeoff run how much less powerful the 150 is than the PA-18 with the 150 horsepower engine how much further down the strip we travel before getting into the air. OK, 
Okay, let's turn right again. Out over the sound. As we approach the valley again, follow the line of the creek. 450 to 500 feet, don't forget. As you'll see, I'm travelling a little faster than I ought to be. Flown this one for a little while. Doing this sort of flying, I've, I've discovered it's very easy to lose track of your energy and store in so erring on the side of caution probably a little too much you can feel it as I come down and take the bend just that little bit higher and that little bit faster Probably could have done it with a bit more flat as well, to be fair. But we make it. Not the tidiest of uh, arrivals, but not catastrophic either. That's the Cessna 150 with the blue tent, camped out on a sandbar near Mo Creek. Next we're going to try the Cessna 170. Now it's a quite an old model, the Cessna 170, it's been a recent update, um, but it works perfectly with the, the bush cam and does fly very nicely. Slightly alarming squeaky wheels, which is a bit odd. I assume it's the wheels anyway. The deck of one is slightly alarming in its length. This is the first time I've flown this aeroplane in its new form, so uh, we'll see how I get on. So yeah, again, we uh, turn right.
over the sound we turn in. for the valley again. This should be interesting because as I say it's the first time I've flown this aeroplane for a long time. First time with this version. over the first sandbar. It's going to go wrong. This is where it will happen. Oh, still worn it. How about that? Very nice. I reckon that's the tail wheel squeaking. There you have it. Camp out in the Cesta 170. All of which brings me neatly to the Aeropract A22 by V Skylab, which is a lovely little aeroplane, quite difficult to fly, um, and just didn't work with the tent. You can see I check the uh, the settings uh, to no avail. You've got it set up correctly, it just doesn't work. So then I checked um, the configuration in uh, Aircraft Manager, and you can see that the tent is set up there, which is a bit of a puzzle, really. Having thought about it for a while and reflected on it, it occurred to me that the V Sky Labs model does have a emergency parachute. I reckon that's configured as a weapon, and therefore it probably is interfering with the plugin, which is why it's not working. I have another video that demonstrates the use of the parachute, which is quite interesting. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well. That's it. The Bush Camp add-on for X Plane Twelve. Why not give it a go? It's a lot of fun. Uh, my thanks to Father of Sun for his hard work in developing it. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe.